but with the rich oscillations. And you see here with these uh, structures that is outside, and here there is another structure inside, they oscillate. There is also one central structure. And by their oscillations, it has very specific features. The proper frequency of the oscillations of this structure to this, in fact, appears to be equal to the Compton frequency. At the same time, the cosmic lattice node, node one of his frequency is also equal to the Compton frequency. And what happens? Also, uh, it, it has also some internal structure by the same prism, but more dense. So the internal structure here defines electrical lines. So when there is electrical field and this structure is moving, it is rotating like a, like a screw. And, how all, and it has all known features of the electron. And they're quantum mechanical features. Also, by these structures, I was able to derive the parameters of the cosmic lattice. I call cosmic lattice that, in fact, correspond to the ether. And uh, I found that in, I derived the equations of the, of the mass equations. And this is this. The mass of the particle is equal to the uh, pressure of the cosmic lattice over the volume of this particle divided by the C square. The volume is impenetrable to the cosmic lattice because it has a denser internal lattice. So, in fact, it de defines. Okay. Why the periodic table is so strange? The answer is that it should have some 3D shapes of the structure. So this is the structure of the, of the proton I found. This is the structure of the neutron. It is the same uh, toroid, but, but it is uh, twisted. Here it is double folded. This is internal structure. So here the, the, the atoms, protons, hydrogen atoms. This is electronic orbit, deuterium, helium. And the more complex atoms, so we distinguish because this is the most dense structure, it stays in the middle. So in more complex atoms, it becomes like this. And here is interesting, the explanation, all the features of the periodic table. For example, I, did, I took the feature of the lithium. And you have here the helium nuclei, here one deuteron. And this free end defines the valence. So here in beryllium, we have two valences. In Bohr, one, two, three. In uh, carbon, one, two, three, four. But in, in the nitrogen, because this becomes closer from the both poles, they are connected with the quantum orbits. They are excluded from valence. So we have three valences, two valences, one valence. And here, a supergradation of forces close, pretty close, this uh, protons, uh, it becomes a uh, noble gas. Here, another example of other elements I made for all elements for, for the periodic table, stable elements. Here, one uh, mock-up that I make for the argon structure that so how they are there. So these are fractal structures. You could say you could not have a freedom to put in different ways. They just take their place that correspond to the more dense uh, structure. Here, example of uh, uh, electron microscope of the golden uh, uh, surface, and this is by these structures. Here the, is the H2 molecule. From this molecule, I calculated one important parameter of supergravitational. And this is this parameter. And using this parameter, I calculated the binding energy between the, uh, the neutron and proton in deuterium by a simple method, and I get pretty close value. Here uh, is another uh, proof that uh, the arrangement of the proton and neutrons. In fact, protons, uh, uh, neutrons are arranged over the proton. 
and they oscillate this in fact this oscillation is so this oscillation is found in this and from this uh, graph you can see that there is one another interesting effect there is a uh, general relativistic effect in micro scale and this general relativistic effect in fact cause the mass outside of this field to be to be detected smaller and this in fact explains the binding energy and here example of uh, proximity uh, field Coulomb uh, field of the proton and neutron. Here is a consideration for multiplication of Coulomb barrier leading to the reactions. Here explanation by this model of some reactions. Here explanation of the these reactions in palladium plus deuteron making a silver. And here you see the Coulomb field make more complicated shape, but it is not circular. This is the explanation of the Piantelian oh, Foucault de Rossi method. Another method here. Here is uh, a, another experiment, explanation of the, from, in fact, the beauty of this is just from the structure of the nuclei, you could. Uh, uh, conceive another possibility. For example, uh, here is the experimentally proved uh, with the nickel that uh, goes to copper or zinc. You, you see here the similarity of uh, this, of the nickel with this chrome. So I make prediction that the chrome also could be involved in the cold uh, fusion reaction. The difference only if we have two radial pairs, we have four radial pairs. And this, the prediction of my prediction is that uh, these reactions are possible according to this structure. So these are conclusions that quantum mechanical model could not serve for understanding the <coughs> cold fusion reaction. And another thing is that cold fusion reaction is not only feasible, it is a good replacement for the unsafe uh, currently used uh, uh, nuclear energy. And here the result of currently used nu nuclear energy. We have so much accumulated hazardous radioactive waste that there is not a, any way to be rid of it. It's only the time, but the time is thousands of years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now let's have some questions for Dr. Sarg. Thank you for an interesting report. As far as I understand, your model actually is a model of super string, hel helical structure, right? No, it doesn't. Uh, there is not uh, any association with super string theory because super string theory they don't have a thickness they don't have a material thickness while these structures they have material structure that's uh, indestructible uh, there are some works which consider uh, analogous to your um, theory uh, that it's helical structure like tor toroidal helix helical structure and uh, my question is, how from your, your theory comes electrical charge? Can you explain formation of electrical charge? Yeah, maybe I, I go very fast about this. In fact, the electrical charge, according to this theory, appears uh, uh, features of the physical vacuum. But uh, in this physical vacuum has to be a uh, particle. So the particle creates uh, oscillations. I show here, for example, the oscillations of this uh, elementary node. And if it is elongated in this way, 
then the electrical, uh, uh, if you arrange many of these in line, they make electrical uh, line. And uh, then the electron internal structures that is very dense make such kind of arrangement and uh, of the oscillation as the cosmic lattice. So, in fact, the electron structure creates electrical charge. And it is a static charge. Okay, and uh, can you calculate according to this model uh, that is exactly minus one charge? Uh, the, the, the charge sign depends on the twisting of the yeah, elementary building the bone, that's a prisms. Mm -hmm. If they are, for example, left side twisting, they create uh, negative charge. If they are right side twisting, they create positive charge. Okay. But uh, I don't, uh, I just explain the physical behind the charge, not calculation of the value. Yeah, I understand. Uh, another question, uh, are you familiar with work of Stephen Phillips? from England. Uh, his book is ESP of Quarks and Superstrings, where he... He uh, confirmed uh, scientifically that what Lidbitter and Bizant observed with their psi vision uh, is real, and that was much more complicated superstrings, but it is even more, much more complicated than helical structure. Yeah. The, the theory of the helical structure doesn't use uh, uh, multidimensional space. Uh, string theory without multidimensional space is impossible. Everything here is in three-dimensional space and unidirectional time. And this structure, because I envision they are real, but they are much, much below the the most powerful microscopes, but they have all features explaining even the quarks, but the quarks, according to you, they are not real particles. Even the mainstream, uh, there is a question, uh, they are real particles. They say quarks, they, they measure some kind of uh, uh, forces from the showers and from the energy, and Einstein equation, they say, oh, this corresponds to quarks. But in the particle uh, experiment, for example, this is the structure of the, of the internal structure of the proton and neutron. And you have here one negative pion, one positive pion, and this is the, uh, the count. When they crush these structures, a multiple possible, uh, multiple possible, they call resonances appears, and they assign every resonance to some structure. Some particle. That, in fact, is a Dr. Yes, no. yeah. Dr. Sarek, thank you very much. Thank you. Rick thank Cantwell you very much. here. Ah, there you are.